members of the Administrative Services Committee. I think I'm missing one. Oh, no, we're not. Uh, all members of the Administrative Services Committee are here, Ms. Gregory and also uh, Mr. Jones, along with other council members, Courtney Hinn, Joel Davis, and Council President, President CJ. Small uh, members of the administration are also here. Ms. Lapp, Chief of Staff of the Barber Legal Section, Ricardo Woods, Shayla Jones, Vico from uh, Planning, and also Mr. Holt and Cecilia Sapp from Accounting. Uh, members and stakeholders from the community are also in attendance. I see Elizabeth in the back, and Wanda, and uh, also from the Corps of Engineers. Project manager Will and Patterson. So, just about everybody we need uh, are in attendance. Oh, that. Yes, uh, before us, before us is two things that I like to accomplish. One is to come up with some type of master plan that allows us to develop the city, Civic Center site, but also at the same time find a way for us to see forward to allow the Corps of Engineers to also get their building and keep on track as we move forward. I think we've <coughs> done a lot of work and have come to some uh, great middle ground on this to where we can see our way see our way forward so that we can get these things done. Today before you are some things that I'd like all of you to see. Uh, but before we move, I gotta say thank you to the city staff Appreciate you guys scrambling to get this together for us. Uh, I know some of the, the things that it took to get, some of the, especially with some of the uh, tables and the structure, some of kind of giving us a hard time, so I appreciate you guys doing that. Uh, Scott, if you would, kind of give everybody an update because you were very, very instrumental in this and let, let everybody know where you are. And then once we go through all that, we'll open the forum to questions and any comments, and we'll see how we can move forward. Uh, let's go back to the last meeting that we had, it was basically a couple of sticking points um, that kept us from being able to, to have the votes we needed to move forward. And that's just where we were. William reached out to me and, and wanted to collaborate with, um, between the two of us and stakeholders um, in the downtown development district area to include um, some of the residents, um, some of the attorneys, um, Downtown Mobile Alliance, um, the Corps of Engineers and, and others. Um, we met for what, a couple of hours, a couple of weeks ago. And what you'll see in front of you is, is what I think is a compromise that, that allows us to do everything that, that William just laid out. Um, the key thing with timing is the Corps of Engineer Bill. And the important thing, and, and this will be discussed here, is the timeline that we have to have to move forward. And all of the things that we need have to be completed, agreed to, and published by next Wednesday. So we can get in line with the public hearing and make sure that the changes that are in <clears throat> stick. Because if one word changes, then our timeline is then pushed back another month. So we have worked, and, and William has worked his butt off over the last couple of weeks. He's done the majority of the writing of this to try and get this in front of everybody. And if you haven't seen it, um, just let us know. We'll get the copy out to you. But if you have any input or you want to see any recommended changes to this, that needs to get in front of William and I before um, the city council meeting on Tuesday, so we can discuss that, um, and, and then the public hearing is that afternoon. I think what we'd like to see is the ability to vote on this after that public hearing, um, probably at the next city council meeting, we can discuss <coughs> the, the dynamics of that. What you see, though, is the merging between the populist plan that was put in front of us by the mayor's administration overlaid by the T codes from the downtown development district. And, and what you'll see in writing is the ability to take those T codes and where the civic center site is to morph that area specific 
to what the populist plan overlay was. For instance, the T codes called the T52 calls for eight stories. We've been able to adjust that and, and create an exception for that site that will be written into the codes to go up to 16 stories in the T52 area, which gives you the ability to build to the specifications that we saw in the populist plan. The planning commission reviewed everything. If you remember, go back, there was a five story build across from Lawrence Street. Planning commission recommended that go down to three stories. The T codes, the T3 that you see goes up to two, code, two stories. So what we have written into that area is an exception to allow that to go to three stories. So everything that you saw in the planning commission coming forward to this body is now drafted in the downtown development district T codes to allow for those builds. So there's your compromise. Uh, both sides gave into that. Uh, we, we, there's no discussion of another entity coming to do another master plan, which would create significant other delays that we don't have time for. This allows for the Corps of Engineer bill to go forward. They will have to go and get one variance for a setback through the Board of Zoning Adjustments, which is not going to be a problem. It's one more step in the process, but I don't see any problems with that getting approved whatsoever. Um, so the timeline is set for that to happen. Uh, the parking garage lays in with this um, as well. So the things that we want to act on to move forward, this allows us the framework and, and the, the zoning architecture to do that. And I'll let William get into specifics, but. I think we've got something that we can get the votes on and move. And, and I, I don't know if we need to get that deep into the weeds, but let's start uh, right here, guys. Um, <clears throat> this is the master plan that was given by Spec. I, I'm, Popular. Popular. Forgive me, guys. Uh, Spec has been on the top of my head since I walked around in Tampa that Water Street was tremendous. At some point, I think we do need spec to transition from the Civic Center across to this acreage and along the waterfront where you guys have the municipal opening and all that good stuff to create a space like Water Street was great. But this was, from, this was from Populous. And uh, what we're going to have to do first, though, is because we took out where you guys said that a master plan was not needed for the site. So. Uh, we've been calling this back of the napkin, you know, a little master plan created on the back, back of a napkin in a meeting that we took out of the populist plan. However, in our thinking, we have a 40,000 square foot uh, piece or a building downtown, which is the Expo Hall. It's very useful. And for us to tear down something that today's market is worth $20 million or better, I think would be kind of the wrong approach. But Populous Plan did not have a section with the Expo Hall on it. Now, what we need to do is with this plan, uh, add a picture of Expo Hall if we can, so that it'll be part of this master plan when we pass it. So when we get ready to pass these two amendments, we need to also pass this as the actual master plan for the Civic Center site. Now, let me tell you how we got there. Um, EDSA did a plan for the city of Mobile in 2012, and the EDSA plan was midtown and downtown. From EDSA, it drove the DDD, which is the downtown uh, development district, and from there we have our form base. So it gives me a plan to reach back to that we can actually say we have a plan that the council formally voted on in the past. So even though we have a plan the council formally voted on the past, it did not have a true master plan for the site. But we can tie that all together with this rendering from populous. So this is what we have to do first. So I think we were all in agreement that we all loved what populous did, and I think it was a great approach by populous. Then I, you know, I'd like you as the council permission to move forward with calling the back of the napkin uh, plan that we have here is the master plan for the Civic Center site, uh, provided that we know we're going to put the Expo Hall in it now. I mean, 
and it was my assumption that y'all would think like me. I mean, we have a 40,000 square foot building that's totally usable, and I would hate to just tear it down, knowing that it would cost us 16 to 30 million to build something just like it again. So, thoughts on that first. I really don't see the utility of the expo. I think we've got an expo all over there, and we don't need another expo. Of course, a um, couple things. Have we, I know we've got some stakeholders here, but from the resident standpoint, have they seen the coals, the 16 stores, like the different changes? They don't, right. They have, right, okay. Right. Um, uh, Jim Bacchus, Carl Stradley, uh Sherry Wicks, I mean Sherry Wicks, Dillahan McDay. I've been up and down the street. I had three of them in a meeting with us, and I've visited everybody else to let them know. And from them, I derived even more so. They're like, why are we tearing down Expo Hall when it's a very useful building? So, you know, that's something to be considered. Now, if we include it in the master plan, it doesn't mean that it's going to stand. It's just in the master plan. A plan can always be changed. Yeah. So, you know, in my mind, let's include it. If we have to change it in the future, then we change it in the future. And then the second component, you know, to go back to the statement you just made, you know, if we, and I, and I said this even with, with Lex, my bad. Thank you, Jim. I said this um, in the past that if we're looking to grow mobile, you shouldn't be downsizing certain things, you know. Looking at that stadium, I talked about that. But of course, we want to make sure that we we have the funds there to be able to complete these projects. Um, I don't see an issue being a plan if because plans can change. But I also have a question: How, What's the usage right now with the Expo Hall? Is it well right now? I was told that we're using that right now. I was told that we're using Expo Hall as our green room. We just moved the. Uh, green screen right there, and they have it programmed, which means that they are using it constantly. At one point, we were actually holding night court in Expo Hall. I don't know if we still hold the night court there or not. That never stopped. But at one point, we're using it. Now, we have used Expo Hall in the past as a, uh, a storm set up center after hurricanes and all of those things. So it's been very valuable to us in the past. And it can continue to add value to what we do in the city if we use it the right way. Now, it adds to the cost of renovation and redevelopment of the site if we keep it, but we don't necessarily have to renovate it at the same time we do the dome and the theater. It's just for thought. You know, I mean, I, I don't see why we would throw away, like I said, in today's market, a building that's worth somewhere between 20 and 30 million dollars. Scott? Yeah, I, I want to make sure that we're not putting the cart before the horse with regards to what specifically are we going to do. I think what we are laying groundwork for is to provide the architectural foundation with the zoning codes to be able to do things. So how we move forward, what we move forward with, what hotel, and if a hotel, what you know, A, B, and C, those options can all be decided in the future. Because I, I think there's got to be a lot of discussions between the mayor's team and investment um, folks and, and you know, government partnership with, with corporate or industrial partners, whatever. We're not there yet. But we do know we have to move forward with a couple of things going on. So I, I think what this does, and, and I think the discussion really needs to focus on do we have. <coughs> the right foundation with what we think is going to be there. And whether the Expo Hall is there or not, the T5 codes that we put in today allow for that. So, you know, whether we draw it in or not, to me it's irrelevant as long as the capability to keep that there is drawn into it, which it is. Does that make sense? Uh, I just <clears throat> I uh, just saw Kendall walk in. Uh, Kendall, can you do me a favor? Uh, can you give us a quick update on the use of Expo Hall? What's happening right now and how often it's being used? Uh, sure. So, 
expo hall now currently is being used more as a sound stage with the LED wall uh, and it has for the last several months. That's really been the concentration down there. Uh, we'll still use it for Mardi Gras. We're going to still use it for other. We've got six or seven events now that are starting to, you know, to book again with the pandemic starting to, you know, roll back. Uh, courts still use that space. We still have the courts down there during, during the week. Uh, but the LED wall is something that's being developed. We're seeing that in other places. We, Oklahoma City, the building we managed there, has actually gone in and renovated their old convention center to use it for this type of space. Uh, so that we see that as something as a as a opportunity to re reimagine that space, if you will, for something along those lines. So it has value. It has value. Yeah, it does have value. How much, how much revenue do we generate? How much revenue is being generated by the uses of the expo? From that particular, or just in general? In general. In general, I, I don't have enough. It's not. It's not a strong amount. You'll see a lot more event days, but the revenue is not. It's not there. I can find out for you exactly what like that roughly, is. roughly. But. Uh, um, it's probably somewhere in the 50, probably fifty thousand range, twenty five, around fifty probably overall with Mardi Gras and all the other things. On an annual basis. The same annual. annual. Three hundred fifty annually. No, 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 no. About 50, 50, 50. 50, oh, 50, 000. Yeah, for that for that space. For but I, I can get it for you exactly what it is. But again, that space is more of a lot more days type thing like this, or tennis might use it, or a volleyball type thing. It's not a big money maker. The money maker is down on the lower end with the arena or the theater. Would you recommend keeping it or tearing it down? Well, I mean, I think that's something as y'all are talking as a master plan yeah. but I think you know I think it would be good if you're going to keep it if you're going to invest it that you need to figure out a way to, to redevelop it re reimagine it for another purpose not just strictly as it is today because okay. if you think back years ago <coughs> the events that were in there at that time are now at the convention center and then other events that was in there during my earlier years they don't longer exist I mean the all the little toy and hobby show, all those kind of little shows, the internet's taking all that. Those get, that's not there anymore. So that's a hard space to, to really book. Uh, so, you know. uh, it's just 40,000 square feet of usable square footage that you can't find anywhere else in the city. Correct. And usually it's like overflow space that we'll use, like Mardi Gras, some of the bigger ones use it for that, uh, that type thing. So I think if we as a group can find something that is to repurpose it, then yes. I would look at it. If not, then that's something the council or administration will have to look at. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, just the, the LED wall, the green, the green screen, and all of that. For those of us who may not know exactly what it was you're talking about, I've heard about it, but if you could explain that. Sure. Well, in fact, the mayor came over and did a really good uh, interview. So yeah. that is set up to where not only is it for movies, but also just regular type video. So, in other words, they can create you standing there in front of that screen uh, instead of having to be on Dolphin Street tying up traffic. You play they can Street actually, <laughs> yeah, they can actually create all of that on the computer as you're standing right there. But they can move you around all, you know, you can be anywhere in the city or anywhere in the world. So it is the new thing as far as the production and technology and all. That's where all of this is coming. And for movies especially, this is huge. So. For the film industry and for Tommy and his group to be pretty in uh, that segment is, is a great opportunity. I have heard about it through the film office. Mm -hmm. um, is this where we did the COVID testing? We did. We did the COVID yeah. testing and vaccines in the expo. It was a drive through and also the arena floor. So we used yeah. both spaces for over a year, well over a year. Well, what kind of shape is Expo Hall? Is it something that can just stay as it is and be used for the green screen and overflow and things like that and does not have to do anything to it? No, you'd have to do some. You'd have to do some upgrades then. Yeah, you would. Even for, even for the even for the green, even for that space. But I mean, it's not getting ready to fall apart today. No, it's not. No, not at all. So it depends on what you what would you like to do that space for. For instance, in the green space, we found out in twenty two. You know, one of the two big things over there is the HVAC system that is fine for all the other events is not 
it's not appropriate for that. It has to be, because of the sound part of it, it has to be very, very, very quiet. It has to be pretty much a new type system. The roll-up door now, that's great, but when the wind blows, it makes noise. Now it's not a problem, but for that particular situation, that would be a problem. So things that you don't even think about, you would have to do research on. Uh, I think the, the question was, is that the building sound and structurally in good enough shape where if we had a deferred maintenance on it, we could still use, have a very good use for it for the things we need without uh, immediate renovation. Part of their study was on that in the CBR. Factors on yeah. yeah, got it. Yeah. Just yeah, I mean, CBR already did that when they were here, like Jim said, it's about five years ago. They did the, that was part of their study to really go through and look at that. But but you've, got, it, you've got information to go back it, and it can't stand it. Research. And, and the other two buildings, especially <laughs> once next door, were under renovation. It would impact Expo Hall if the other buildings were under renovation. That's a good question. Uh, well, I, I know it, it is okay to ask you that, but I mean, that would be a question we would need to ask. If, if in fact, Expo Hall should stay and the other two buildings, especially next door, were under renovation, would that have any sort of impact to the structure of Expo Hall? And it would say yes, but it also depends on what phases you might be doing. You know, if you're well, doing theater right. only versus, you know, so so next to the arena park, yes. Yeah. 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 The populist proposal called for populists to also do a study and add Expo Hall to his plan, but however, it's not included right here, so. Well, because when we looked at it, they gave us all these options, That's right. and most everybody was going toward mostly just the arena and the theater without Expo they Hall. They gave us two options, yeah. one with Expo Hall and without the theater, one without Expo Hall and the theater. There was never one that had all three together. So, as populists were supposed to look at them like that, I think we need to reach out to them and ask them to complete the assignment. I think that Expo Hall would be a good piece to have included in the master plan. So, if we could, I mean, it sounds like we have some type of consensus here to at least show them in this napkin drawing of the master plan. And if the plan changes somewhat, then we can do that. Well, I mean, I guess as far as as we go forward, whatever happens with these buildings and or what's around it, uh, as, as long as keeping Expo Hall there does not uh, hinder, the hinder, hinder anything else and if it just stays there. But if somebody comes along and has a great plan to put something in here rather than Expo Hall, that would create a lot of revenue for the city. And We have to pass, in, in order to move forward with the transit districts, then we have to have a master plan in place first. So we're discussing the master plan before we move forward. So the, just to make sure to clarify for the members that weren't part of it, the, the Planning Commission adopted the master plan. It's actually a, a slightly different version than you have in front of you, but it's basically, it's close to that. Close. already that's been done by the Planning Commission what I think you're suggesting is they adopt a different one that's that correct. includes the Expo Hall we were on the mask in that it be included because I think the building has used I talked so with Scott and people in the community and stakeholders and I think that even if we don't keep it it still should be included in the max plan yeah, but you you, know, you so can, I mean, you it's can, not hurting us to include it in the master plan. You could also adopt the master plan that was already approved by the Planning Commission and still keep the Expo Hall. It, it's just a plan. You, it, it's, it's one way or the other, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Well, the other one uh, does not, and, and I'm not arguing, but, uh, you know, and I appreciate all the time that was put into it, but the other one doesn't hold the existing form from existing ordinance in place. They were created subset districts that you know, don't match what we have in place, but by doing it this way, coming to this compromise, we're using an ordinance that we already have, which is the DDD. No, so I, we're not rewriting anything. I understand, but I think you're muddying the two issues. The plan, the picture, 
it's been, back to the back of the pitch. That has been adopted by the Planning Commission. And that's why we, that's why I chose to keep it right. as part of this plan, right. but also have the <clears throat> Expo Hall as part of it, because I think that the Expo Hall adds value. If this was a, a great river, and if you notice, we took off the zoning, because the zoning is not part of the master plan, you know that. So, I mean, I think we've got a great compromise here, Jim. To help you move forward, I think we can get everything that we all want in this building. I, I think his, his point there, William, even if we adopted this without drawing that on there, it, it doesn't really change anything. There's, there's, Say it again. It, it doesn't change anything whether that's on there or not, because <coughs> we're not saying that, that the yeah, way the master plan looks is exactly what we will do. Everything that that happens inside the master plan has got to come back before the planning commission and the city and city council as well. So uh, if it's there or not there, I think at this point really is relevant uh, in, in the truth of whether the expo hall will stay or go. I don't think it necessarily has to be in the master plan. I think, I understand your point of it's there, it exists. I don't, I don't see it either way. Well, you know what we could do just to keep it from being contentious at all. Let's just draw something in here and put civics in there. <laughs> that would be fun. Uh, uh, yeah. If we, if we can go back to these. Go back to the, These two. We're, we're going to get there. Uh, okay. But I just want I want to make sure that we all look at with our back of the napkin plan. Right. Well, I only do this put in civics in there, right? Well, we're going to put well, the inclusive theater in. Well, I mean, I'm just saying civics in Right? No, well, you got core building. You got the park building, garage. parking garage. Yeah. You've done both of these. Yeah. Incorporate that. No. The core building, parking garage, is always going to be there. Yeah. But these, these differ in a way. And once we get past this, and I know that we have something we can pass while we're on, we can move on. Well, that's what I was trying to say. Where are the differences between these two? It looks almost exactly the same. The, the outline is the same, except the transit districts are a little bit different. But they also all allow the same uses as the original, and we can get there, but it's, it belongs to the GDP. Uh, are we in agreement on this, you guys? I don't think so. CJ? Hold you? on. Uh, when, uh, I, just, I just don't see, I don't, I don't, I don't understand, I don't understand why we're putting the uh, expo hall back in here, when everybody understands it's going to be back. Well, my understanding is, what has been passed by the Planning Commission would allow the inclusion with the retention of the Expo Hall. Is that right? A any and all of it. it, it again, this is just a, a, a concept plan. That, That's it. That, so whether it's there or not, ultimately the final decision has to get made once we do a final design and plan, which may or may not include the Expo Hall. That's to be determined. The concept plans that Papios came up with that we paid them for recommended that not keeping it for the reasons Kendall pointed out. It was built at a time we didn't have a convention center, and so we needed a space like that. Now we have a place that's bigger and better. And there were shows and types of activities that needed a space that size. Those don't exist anymore. So we're kind of just keeping it for ancillary things that may or may not need it, that we only get about 50000 a year on. The improvements would obviously be significantly expensive to do, and it would obviously change the concept design recommended by the consultant for what they said for the facilities. Again, it could be changed, it could be modified, we could keep it, we could not keep it, that's either here or there. I think fundamentally for the master plan you're looking at, it doesn't make a difference whether you adopt that one or had them go put it back in. I'm just going to pay them to go put it back in only to adopt something that really doesn't change anything fundamentally. I mean, but this is their plan, so if you're telling me that their plan, is that in the wording of their plan about this law? Well? There's not specific wording that associated that accompanies that plan. The Planning Commission adopted a drawing, and it's actually a slightly different version than the one you're looking at. So, but I, I think really getting back to the zoning is the big issue we're probably here to talk about. So. Right. I want to be able to move forward on the 22nd when we get to this. And I want a clear understanding that we all know that we necessarily do not have to tear down the Expo Hall 
And that because they saw all the showing this marriage plan, that means that we're just going to go in there and tear it down without any type of uh, ownership or 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 uh, or I guess permission from the council to do so. Because really, I see a whole lot of value in the building. Now, if it's the at the top, whatever council's here, consents to the removal of it, then I don't have a problem with that. But so yet, I, I want to know that the intent was is that in the future, if it were decided to be removed, we did show it as money, and not that the intent was to, you know, eventually tear it down. It comes down to almost like when you and I were talking, when you bought me a picture, said, "Well, hope they showed houses out here on this site way back in 2012 and all the way across." But that was never the intent. Yeah. Remember, I mean, I mean, I was actually here for that. Again, but you thought it was the intent. Again, these are these are proposals, concepts, plans. Ultimately, anything that happens has to come through the council to get approved. Period. So there will be multiple bites of this apple between now and anything that happens in the future. Corey, you have anything on this? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Um, I guess, Jim, you're saying that if it was added, it, it cost more money to do that. Well, I'd have to pay him to go do another drawing. I, I, or they'd probably, they'd probably do it if I just told him to do it, but it doesn't change anything fundamentally. We just have to go back to the planning commission and get them to readopt that picture versus the other one. But it, again, fundamentally, it doesn't change anything. Okay. Well, it shouldn't cost the same money anyway. It was part of their proposal. I mean, I read every <coughs> request that was sent out, so it said <coughs> that they had to include the expo hall in so, um, to answer your question, um, yeah. if it's not a, if it doesn't cost anything, and it's no problem, then why not do it? I guess it's, you know, you know, we kind of talk about it. It's like we're saying the same thing over and we've been doing this for a couple of minutes. Like, if it doesn't cost nothing, visual does matter. Some people who might not want to read it, they go look at all the expo hall, it's not that. You know, so maybe, it's not going to be that, but we know because it's not written in the statement and all that that it's an opportunity for it to, to be there. But if it doesn't cost any money, it's not costing the city and the taxpayers anything. But they end up thing and let's move on. So I, I, the only thing I need to check with Shayla and Bert is would the Expo Hall overlay the T3? I think it does. So the Expo Hall would be on the T3, which would create a problem, correct? So no, it doesn't, because what we wrote, it was an exception from Civic Center Drive down to Canal Street. So that means that the exception would take effect at the boundary where the Expo Hall starts. That was one of the problems when I told you last week, we have no survey, no boundaries of the areas which you've laid out. So you can't really zone something that doesn't have a boundary or survey per lot. So that brings you back to where I said you need a real master plan with real boundaries, so let's try not to uh, stretch that argument today. And let's just try to make this work for everybody. Here, here's the crux of where we are. And, and whether we put it in or not, to me, is a time issue. Yeah. Can, can we get a building drawn by Tuesday? Uh, I think they can just say, they probably already have it in a charrette somewhere and they can have it. But, but then don't, don't you have to take it back to the no, planning commission? This no, this is an amendment this that we're amendment putting forward. Right. This will be an R amendment. So we don't have to take anything we're doing back to the planning commission. Yeah. So, it's part of the, so the issue is, was the Civic Center, right. they had the boundaries for the Expo Hall and everything, but they fit in this, but they're not going to fit in yours? No, they didn't. They, 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 they didn't put Expo Hall in so it doesn't fit in the picture. No, it doesn't. So that's why Scott's going to say that. And that's why Scott's going to say that. Okay, so let's, um, let's add it, please. Okay? Jim, let's add it. Got it. All right, let's move on a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> I think we can speed up the process a little bit and then we take a look at the red lane plans. Uh, if you turn in uh, the, I want to say the DVD, to page three, you'll have the overall regulating plan that shows a 
the overall regulated plan that shows all of downtown, that actually shows the change in the civic center site and the community and how it now fits into the surrounding downtown uh, subtransit districts. And you'll see that now we have our area that's in consideration, which is the civic center, now matches the downtown Conception Street area, St. Emanuel area, with the T2 as it transforms to the north and the east. So now we have a plan that matches the overall the overall downtown portion of the city. Uh, it's on page three of the DVD. Yeah. Here, you can have them out. I got these guys. Yeah. Okay. So it gives you, it, it lets you know and see exactly how our whole downtown fits and forms together. Most of these, like ours, that were established when they were in 1702, 03, actually use form based code architecture in order to make their cities grow and build and, and to look, you know, to look and feel the way they do. So by doing this, we're matching our overall city plan and we're moving forward with one of our largest stakeholders downtown, which is also the downtown mobile alliance. And also, to be real, uh, Church Street East, uh, not Church Street East, but also Daytona Square, where they just had a new development on Jackson Street with residential structures for, uh, of Jackson and turning back more to stay. So I think this is a, a good idea. Now to move over, um, to move through this a little bit, uh, the changes that you'll notice are in teal, are in teal blue, teal green, however you call those. Um, you'll see our notes. Well, actually, they're in gray in here. I believe one of that. You didn't get the, you didn't get the teal in ours. I made it gray and green. Okay, you made it gray. Okay, sorry. But you'll notice the, the subtle changes that were made. If you look at first one, I think it was on page 10, where it talks about setbacks, and, uh, area minimum footage. Uh, we're actually talking about Lawrence Street right here. Uh, those are the, that's the residential area on Lawrence Street that's a T3. Uh, the setback calls for uh, a 40, 40 feet minimum, 120 feet max. This is the area of lot. Uh, side of Warren Street between Civic Center Drive and Canal Street, the minimum French width shall be 30 feet. Uh, you know, this is a standard here. Uh, the setbacks, we all know, we can go to the Board of uh, Zoning Adjustments and have those adjusted, which, you know, is part of any process in any neighborhood if you want to adjust the setbacks a little bit. Uh, if you take a, a little jump over to the next page and you look at the primary usage, you'll see those in the frontage, in the secondary frontage, in the side and the rear. So it's accounted for in the T3 use right here with those little notes of change. And that's not very much different from what the administration was trying to do uh, with their uh, 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 special district codes. I think that's the way you want to call those. Uh, if you look at the next page, you'll actually see the use table. Uh, in a use table, guys, R means by right, P means planning commission. Uh, a lot of these are by right, and where you see P, it means, you know, it's a planning commission thing. Uh, take a look at them real quick. Let me know if you think that some of them should be right, by right or planning commission. We, we did adjust these, and I don't know how we show this and reflect this, because we're taking out, for this site, we're taking out a lot of these uses, as, as you and I discussed. Yeah. But I don't know how we reflect that in here. For instance, we're not going to allow warehousing many storage, mixed use lights, manufacturing, uh, manufacturing light. Those three are coming out for this site. Laboratory facility is coming out. Um, produce growing processing is coming out with huge sales. Um, so we've got to have a way to reflect that and what we agree to. You know, there's some of these that are we need to discuss, uh, but funeral home. I don't see a funeral home being on the site. That, no, that I, I, I don't either. I think yeah. we sent the use table over to Jim and everybody else yesterday. Were y'all able to reconstruct the use table, Shayla? 
Yes. Um, on your use table, you'll see that there are uh, gray blocks. Yeah, I see those. And then there's a green R, and then there's a subscript on them that has a number. Yeah, one says R1. One. one is one, and that there's two. And then if you get to the end of the table, you'll see where the notes were added as you had done that in your edit. Yeah. So they are in there. Okay, I got gotcha. you. And it's done in a similar way in the UDC version as well. Okay, so you just you put it in your form. Yeah. I'm sorry. So it's got it's all there. Okay. So I think it's highlighted. Yeah, they're just highlighted and changed. But they won't be the ones that would be coming out. Right. Now you'll notice that all of the special district civic center stuff was actually all taken out and then the uh, transit sub districts were added in the proper place that they should be at it. Yeah, there's something we missed, so. All right, well, page, there for discussion. Yeah, you know, page 14. I don't see any of the notes highlighted on T52, General Hall, Hospital. Those need to be note annotated. Okay. All note of services, that needs to be highlighted. Right. Out about 25.2? Yes. Right. I mean, unless y'all want to put an automotive services place in the Civic Center, I don't think that fits. Well, my only concern there was, and this is a good question for Willie, Willie, does the core still have its gas storage tanks and, and refuel spots? The solar state now. They won't get it in the garage. Now, one issue we need to discuss on the T3 for uses for St. Lawrence. Okay, that's that's out. Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nursing retirement housing, uh, boarding houses, and boarding houses. Boarding houses. We took those out. I'm showing that in. So that, that, needs to out. that was taken out. So we need to update that. Okay. Let's just strike the ones that we just talked about. Let's remove those. That's part of the amendment. Jim, is there a question about anything? I'll make sure first to keep it over. Are you first? Okay. Does that do your strikes? Yeah, we're going through them right now. Uh, go, go back over your strikes. He's, on, he's on your use table now. We'll start at the top of page 14. I think page 13 is good. Go to we're on 14. So start, start at the top of page 14. Take out funeral home. In which district? T-52. T Strike out funeral home, hospital. Automotive services. And Restaurant the rest are okay. Well, and boarding T3, houses. You have boarding houses <coughs> to come out for T3 and T52. And we're leaving the homeless shelters as planning commission. So take out homeless and just keep emergency shelter. Those are recommendations. So senior housing, nursing home, and retirement home, you're fine with? Yeah. And we got to have places for all those. And really, we need a place for the homeless, too. Uh, but that's, we have another idea for that as the time comes, but on a different side. I just, I, I'm just surprised with the most valuable property in the city of Mobile that we're, we're going to put that type of use in there. Look, that, well, that's, well, hold on, that, hold on, hold on. You may have a point. Yeah. Why? Just why? I'm just asking. That's what I'm I just mean, making sure. Okay. What's your reason? There, there's not. I'm just saying that what I would, what I think what we've been told is this is. Does it devalue the neighborhood? No, well, that's not that's not the point. It just the, what the issue is, Brian, that this is the most valuable piece of property in the city. So I'm just asking if that's the, the uses, nursing homes, and things we want to have there. That's all. You know, you know what we talked about and it is that we were going to take those to peace. I mean, that's right. But here's the thing: it goes to the planning commission. Not but right. if the structure and the fabric and the material match the neighborhood, who's going to ever know it's that? I, I, I'm not picking it. I'm just asking what was your thinking? To take it out? Do you think it doesn't match the neighborhood or won't fit out? No, it's just what, what, what you want on that piece of property. 
what do you want that piece of property to do for you? That's all. So why don't we turn all those P's? Yeah. Why don't you just turn them? Yeah. Yeah. We'll turn P's and take it through planning commission. Yeah. Let's do that. Robert, can we get those P's, please? And uh, page 15. I did have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, back under civic support, which is page 14, the museum. Bar, bar. I've had a trouble here. Okay. The museum park and open space under and government uh, civic support, page 14. Yeah. There is a discrepancy between the current zoning ordinance version that you're looking at and the UDC version. Yeah. So in the current zoning ordinance, it's planning approval. Uh -huh. But then in the use table for the UDC version, I couldn't tell if it was proposed to eliminate them from T3 or not. Uh, it would be conditional use there. So that's just something you guys would need to decide. Well, let me ask you. I mean, you're a whole lot better at this than I am, and I've called 100,000 people. What would you write? Well, uh, conditional use uh, under the UDC version means it has to go through the Planning Commission okay. and the City Council. I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah. I'm fine. I agree. Okay. Um, on page 15, guys, I was fine with most of this unless you guys as a council see something that needs to change there. So T3 does not allow multifamily development? Correct. Correct. It's, it's strictly residential. Single family. Single family. Yeah, and and two, family. two family. Two family. And, and no, not you won't put 30 units in the T3 or 16 units in the T3. But right behind it, it could be a, a 16 story multifamily use, correct? Right, right now it's that way. And that was the whole reason of having both of these maps today, just so that we can, once we get through these tables, we're going to talk a little bit about that and get a feel from the council and everybody else. That was brought to my attention. I believe yesterday afternoon that you know we might want to stagger the heights and stuff like that if if we had to, but you know to be honest, the city owns the land anyway, so it really doesn't matter because it still has to go to planning commission. It still has to go through everything else. Planning commission said it doesn't fit the form of the area, so no, you know. So I mean, so that's that's the that's the greatness of format. You know, it's not like you put it in on. Let me caveat on that. Back to your point of it's a planning commission, city, city council decision. What this and. That has fun. And then, it, just because we approved this up to 16 stories, doesn't mean that that's what's being built there. It means we had the flexibility to move up. And we could even change that to, if somebody wants to come in and do a 30 story high rise. Then we can amend this if needed. If, if everybody's in agreement with that and the stakeholders of the city, we can still change that. But right now, this takes us up to 16 stories in T52. For this space, you could. I mean, I, th I think you're going to create a situation where developers have an unrealistic expectation of what they can do with that property if the council has no inclination to allow a 16 story building up against the two foot. And that, that's the point. So, and by the way, if they come up with a 16 story building, it's authorized. You, it, you, you can't tell them no, it's in your. It's in your well, I mean, no, it's not. I mean, it's, the area it, is authorized for anything up. To 16 feet. Correct. That does not mean that you're going to put something there that's 16 feet. They, they could. It still got to come but to the planning still commission. Has to go, it still has Again, to go. Again, but the only way to deny that would be a subjective, uh, well, we just don't like it. It's still got to come to the city council. Right. That's right. But if the city council says we don't like it, I, but, then, but, but to Jim's point, then we're basically setting a false thing. So any developer saying, 
we we know if we know right now you don't want that, you're basically talking to whoever you can put anything you want on there, but you really can't. And you have no intention. And you have no intention of approving it. So the, let me just finish by saying. The reason, and we're trying to do this right now around this table, that we spent four months going through developing the other plan was specifically to be very deliberate and thoughtful to the comments we heard, to the plans that have been done, to make sure we accommodate all those things. And it was very, we spent, what you're doing right here, we spent four months around tables going through. And so I, I hate to be hasty in an hour meeting to try and fix something that we spent four months doing and being very deliberate and thoughtful. And I'm not saying it's not worth finding something, but part of me thinks we ought to figure out what is the one or two things in the original thing that weren't agreed with and to try and fix them because I think we're gonna wind up setting a thing that we have to then get a bunch of variances for or we have people waste what time. What are you with. asking for, Jim? I think we're asking for a graduating system of height, all right, going from say eight foot Story, a story, yeah. Where? story. I mean, especially abutting residential property. I just don't think that we should create a situation where developers think they can put a 16-story building and waste time and effort and money uh, designing something next to a three-story house. Right. Single give family. Me, give me that. just a second, guys. <coughs> Let y'all have a say. Let's go back to this idea. First of all, first of all, I'm I'm in I'm in favor of flexibility. That's what we do on this side. Having said that, this is a question for Mr. Woods. We've had we've had we had several incidences in the recent past where the decision of the city council with respect to land use has been overturned by a court. So my question would be: let's say we adopted this. And we and someone came along and wanted to put a 16-foot building right behind the houses on Lawrence Street. And either we or the planning commission denied that. It seems like to me that the, the, that the applicant would be in a good position to take that to court and say that the city acted arbitrarily in, in refusing to allow us to build our 16-story building when they were when it was authorized within this area. You're, you're correct. That, that, that's the correct statement. I can kind of see that. Oh, 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 oh. But, but I can see that argument too, especially what we know about plans. We're constantly saying we have a plan, go by the plan. And if we adopt a plan, what's going to be our argument when we say, well, no, 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 no. Um, it's got to go through. We don't like it. Even though we said you could do up to 16 foot, now we're going to say, no, 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 you can't. And they're going to go back and point and say, but you approved the plan. Yeah, you know, so. minutes. And it's not just, you're correct, not just the plan. You're also talking about those uses on the use chart. That's, that's I think that's what Colonel DeLapp is, is focusing on, not just the perception, but if you had somebody come in with, you know, 15, 15 stories. And, 15 you know, and you've got, you know, we've approved, we've approved 16, not just in the plan, but also in the use chart, which is part of the zoning. What, what's going to be our reason for telling them no at the planning commission level? Well, that's what I think well, Mr. Davis is making that well, point. Well, let me help you out there. First, to start off, this is a transect district. You don't even have boundaries or streets or curbs or curb cuts. You have nothing. So this is an area. Once you get to actually subdividing and dividing, then you can come up with something. But for right now, this is just plain. And, and you you have nothing. This, this thing right here, I, I, so, excuse me. I'm sorry, because some of my good friends put this together. But what are you coming to? Some imaginary? Thing out there in the sky, you're not talking to anything. You don't even have a basis to start from. This is this is this is made up to use the site that you have. But you, 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 let, let me pop in here for you guys. If you look at the master plan, and, and here's what Wayne's saying, and, and this is important for this series of homes that you see behind 
where that T3 is. The one that sits to the east of that. There's no way for the city council today to define that space. No. There's no way to do it. There's no roads. There's no intersections. There's nothing. So how do you try and, and, and come in and this we need to find this space because we've got street boundaries. We can define right behind the T3 with the setback off of this road. The only way we'd be able to come back in here and set off a, a, another elevation change, we could possibly do it, and this is a question for, for legal, we would have to use some type of feet, X feet back from this boundary because there's nothing to define it at this point. And there's our challenge. So, so that, that was effectively done. It, it, it wasn't. No, it, it was. So this, just to be clear, this plan was scaled against the master plan. This, this zoning map was scaled against the master plan. So effectively, the, the CC1, which is the Civic Center Arena, and that is a 16, uh, sorry, 13 stories. That square covers that footprint, and the surrounding areas that are, have the other four areas are done to scale to meet the areas and, and the, the items that would be in there. So CC4 in the green, that's rather broad, and it's it's that whole area, and it, there a lot of things can happen there, but they can't exceed eight stories. So it doesn't need to have curb cuts and roads. It just says. Anything within that footprint, but this is scaled. What, how are you defining that footprint? He said he scaled it. it again, like it's scaled off of the plan. On, on a civil set of drawings. Tell you what, send me the scale. I've got a, a engineer scale in my office, and then I'll look at it. I do it for a living. I'm not going to just buy that. Could there be any objection by council, though, to create a T5.3 that has an eight story maximum? You can't hear Talk loud. He wants a T5.3 that has an eight-story maximum. This one? Is this one? No. Yeah, it is. Well, we just do an exception on T5.2 within those parameters laid out in that drawn-off area, not to exceed eight feet within that T5.2 in the space, just like we're doing the exceptions on the T5.2 in, in the civic center spots. Well, I make it clearer to make it specific rather than under exceptions? Well, I... Well, well, first of all, Jim, yeah. is there something y'all are trying to put there <coughs> that we don't know about? No, I think it really goes back down to what we were talking about earlier, that if the council has no intent of putting a 16-story building next to a T3, why don't we graduate it just like the original plan was? And you can use your T codes. There is nothing that prevents you from creating a T5.3 in the area designated CC4. But how do we know a 16-story building is not going to go there? We walked through Tampa yesterday, and there were all sorts of three-story buildings with 16-story buildings right inside. Yeah, not three-story single-family residences. No. No. That's what Look, this is owned for. But you can keep your use stable, identical, and the only thing that's restricted to T53 would be the height. But you're going to amend the ordinance anyway. It would be easier. So you want to you want to restrict like that's that's all of T.53 to eight feet. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, if you look at look at your where is CC4 is uh, look, 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 let me ask, let me ask this, Elizabeth. You were instrumental in doing form based downtown. What do you think? Well, what I think is that it's that it's confusing for you all because you really have two hats today. You're the developer, and you're the and you're the the, yeah, the lawmaker. You got to talk louder. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> what I think is getting confused here in some of the discussion is that y'all are trying to make this a in this case of having two hats. You're both the developer, you're the property owner, who will be deciding how the property is developed. So this, this stuff about being fair at the planning commission, none of that's relevant. It doesn't have to go before the planning commission when y'all, once you, once the zoning is done. Right. And you, you also <coughs> own the property. It's, it's, this so is, why, like this it is. is why a master plan is needed. Let me just point to the, this, this whole discussion is why a master plan is needed. 
but in the effort of time, the compromise that Scott and Lee worked out is to move forward with something that's pretty generic and pretty flexible and allow the maximum things that they allow, but, but be able to move forward knowing that y'all own the property. And as you get more serious and moving towards uh, considering developments, then you can then you can decide exactly what you want where. Only thing that seems to be known at this time is the core building, residential, and a hotel. Let me, let me ask a follow-up question to Elizabeth's statement to Ricardo. What I understand Elizabeth to be saying is that we could go with this, which would authorize up to 16-story buildings. As, as the municipality planning organization, okay? But then, when, let's say, a developer came to us and wanted, a developer came to us as the property owner. Correct. And wanted to put a 16-story building next to these single-family homes, we could say, no, we don't want to do that. Is that correct? Yes, you could say that, yes. But what, what they're saying is, we didn't want, we don't want to lure somebody in with false expectations that they would be able to put a building there if we never intend to put one there. Well, we, we don't, we don't go, go ahead, go ahead. But, but don't you think that the only people that are going to develop on this side, on this side, are people, those are not necessarily for you, this is for these other ones. The only people that are going to develop on this side come to us they're, 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 they're not they're not going to any other property oh, yeah, my, my point is that they're not I'm not sure I'm not sure I fully <coughs> supported by the argument that we're luring them in because we're the people that are trying to do the luring right correct we're correct open. so just just know that we're, we're making an educated decision here to not because we're dealing with zoning I think, and I think that's what the first point we were, we were making is, once we zone it, it's not back to the planning commission, you all, except for on the developer side. Right. So you don't, you, don't, you don't get a chance to tell them no. So for institutional memory, if you all at some point, this council or the next, decides, hey, we're gonna sell the building, and you sell it without this in mind, it's still zoned properly. We just have to remember that. That's that's what I'm saying. I, I see what you're saying. So if we, if we, if what you're saying is, we have the right as the owner to tell someone who comes to us with a 16 story building we don't want them. Correct. But if we ever sell the undeveloped property to someone else, then then and someone came along and wanted to put a 16 story building, we we lose control over that. Correct. Unless you put a deed restriction in. Oh, that reflects whatever your wishes are. Yes. Oh, <clears throat> sure. We just have to remember that. We don't know what the time frame is. That's the only legal point I make. The rest of it is policy and other people. All right. Well, the deed restriction deal, I just did out and, and applied to myself for the same type of issue. So I understand that 100%. So as the owner of uh, Elizabeth, normally I don't allow the gallery to talk <laughs> as <laughs> But I will allow two seconds. What is, what is the scenario where this I can't hear you. What is the scenario, Ricardo, where, where this um, supposed property owner would have to come before the planning commission? Is it the subdivision? Yes. So if, you, if you're looking for a subdivision, yes. Only if they're looking to change the subdivision and only if somebody else owns the property. I understand. But still yet, we would have to make a determination if we wanted to sell to the developer. For, for the I, I, I think we're clear. We've been looking for a Okay, guys. Um, that was about our height variance and right there. So I'm okay with the way it is. I think we can make our make our argument that we're light years ahead of where we were the other day. Uh, if you look at the UDC, the same corrections were made in the UDC that were made in the DVD. So it's uh, basically uh, identical uh, uh, 
change to the uses and the exceptions are, are identical also. So uh, if we're okay, we'll go ahead, Bart. Just one more point of clarification. Is it something I missed? It's on. It's on. It's on. It's on. So, uh, in between the DDD and the EDC version regarding the building materials next year finish. Yeah. In one version, you did include municipal and open as being subject to the building exterior finishes, and the other version you didn't. So it, it, they should mirror, okay. match each other. And then where it says uh, the ARB, make sure I didn't miss any spots where the ARB. Now where the ARB should be also. Okay. Yeah. Now uh, in the municipal districts and the other that the administration created, those damn great ideas. Uh, especially knowing what the intent they want to do along uh, Water Street between the Convention Center and Gulf Quest. Again, I mean, just walking from the hotel to the waterfront and the eateries that were there uh, yesterday kind of opened my eyes to what we could do in that short bit of space downtown if we were to get there. So I think that that's a great use. Uh, and I think that it's monumental, and I think that we truly need a plan if we're going to do that because the opportunity is coming to us shortly once this cloverleaf and these trumpets are taken down over here to our east. It's going to create an opportunity that we've never seen. So, Let's deal with that. yeah, I, well, that's what we're doing. <laughs> I know we're talking about the uh, special district and municipal district that are out. That are out there still part of this ordinance. So, if you guys have seen any changes to the special district and the municipal district that you think we need to be changed, then let us know. But I didn't think we really need to change any of that. I think it was a pretty good idea. So, Scott, okay with us? So, 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 if all minds are alike, our master plan is good. Why? You're talking about adding Expo Hall? Yes. No, we're not. Well, no. We'll just Why does that? it just need to be no. just generic? I'll get the updated drawing by Tuesday. Yeah. Well, Why don't you just make it generic? Call it Civic Center and, you know, we, we do what we do with renovating the buildings or not, or tearing them down or not. I mean, is that a decision we got to make today? Well, I've got to advertise. It has to be. Your input is fine. I, I, I honestly don't think that it matters one way or the other. But let's just leave it alone. Delap. Yeah. Yeah. Leave the expo hall off. That way I'll have 100% commitment from the council. Yeah, about 100% right now. Commitment from the council on the master plan. Don't put the expo hall on. Don't put the, the expo hall on. All right, leave it off. That way we get a hundred percent commitment. I mean, we know it's supposed to be there. We know it's in the way. All right. Um, everybody's okay with everything else. Okay. Um, Mr. Patterson, you okay with all this? Yes, sir. It sounds good. Like we're moving forward. And your building meets all of the requirements of form base. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Now, but before we, hey, I, I, Scott, I can't see. I can't. Before we leave, uh, there was a question of me last week, this week, last week. It's about the panels above the first floor in the material change. The form base says that it really doesn't allow the, the material change. But I, I, from what I read, the material change is only on the first first floor. Am I not, Elizabeth, am I not correct? But I'm talking about the poorest building. The material change on the second floor is fine. I, I, don't, I don't know what the materials no, are. I don't either. But, but, Willie, but the CRC has the ability to the, I'm about to get the there. Material. But Willie, yes, Willie, Willie, Willie Paris. Yes, sir. Inside the DDD and the UDC, I sent Jim a copy of a highlighted section 
where the CRC has the ability to grant exception to the material change. So if that question is asked of you in the era of BB, then you need to have that piece of paper because they may not be as up to date as, as the person that wrote this current code. All right? But I do think you need to acknowledge how, how we've been handling that historically. Um, and I guess my point is, you're not, we're not seeing significant development within the DDD, so we don't have like a track record of how we've handled it. But the, the, the CRC has been handling what I would describe as more insignificant material changes. Um, anything more significant in terms of uh, materials has gone to the Board of Adjustment. Um, and then there's a question about what has been recommended in the draft as far as materials. So but I'll let Bert speak to that. Well, for example, concrete is not an allowed exterior finished material uh, per the DDD in either version that you're looking at. Uh, if the core building is going to have concrete exterior, this, the CRC, which is a staff level essentially review, if they say, sure, you can use concrete instead of one of the five approved materials in the DDD, that puts staff in a very untenable position uh, if it gets challenged by any other person who's developing a building. Okay, hang on a second. Will it, uh, I'm sorry, this, <coughs> Mr. Patterson, <coughs> is the concrete the finished surface or it doesn't have a finished material on the top of it, like painting, is it, is it? Painted concrete. So I'm not an architect, I'm looking at it now, what was submitted? Painted concrete. That's what that's like. Painted concrete. Painted concrete on the top, two thirds, and a thin veneer brick on the bottom, the third. And glass is squished and metal cornice. So I think the, the finish would be the paint and not the concrete itself, would it not? It's not exposed concrete. It's still concrete. Yeah. If that's like the, underneath it's on the top. But listen, or stuck up. why do we have anything in writing that says there's an exception to policy if we're not going to follow the exception? You talk about the CRC? Yes. I don't care what organization they are, if they have the authority to make a decision, then they got the authority to make a decision. And I don't care who questions it. Is it a legal entity? Is it a legal authority? And can they overturn and uphold another decision by another body? There's the question. Is it a legal entity? It's a step. It's the CRC cannot overturn yeah. any other entity's decision. Yeah, it's the staff, it's, it's the administration, it's the city. Okay, so. quick question. Um, Shelly, you're over the ARB, right? Uh, the Historic Development Department staffs the Architectural Review Board, yes. What were their thoughts? Has, has anybody seen the, the revised core building yet? They submitted their application on, uh, I believe it was Monday. It's currently being reviewed by staff. Okay. When I was at the last meeting, I don't remember the the stories four through six being questioned as far as material finish. It was the offsets, the reflective glass, the uh, the gym being in the front of the building, and the material on the first floor. Sounds like all that's been changed. So, was there a problem with the the concrete with the Arabic? I do recall that there was an issue with, with regard to materials at the ARB level. Where is the CRC exception in writing? Where is that found? I, uh, I, I, email, I emailed it to you. Was, was, it's, 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 we, we need to visit that. At the beginning, Scott, in the... Um, Page 6, I believe. Page 6. So the, the four a one. Uh, little I number. That's right. It's page six of the DDD under administration's one I. It says minor adjustments to site place and building design documents, minor deviations, minor adjustments shall be limited to. Da, 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 da. And under the third one, it says alternate building materials may be considered where the materials proposed are considered 
equal than or better than the materials listed and regularly available materials are preferred. Okay, so based off of that, does the CRC have the authority to approve the fish? The yes, answer that is yes. It gives them clear authority. It gives them clear so authority. I don't care if any staff organization comes back and doesn't like it, if they have the legal authority to make that decision, to make a decision. Right. Well, I don't care who doesn't like it. One more thing. Shayla, 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 and, and, and Ricardo. It's me. To be honest, no, I, I just need to know the order within the city. Would the ARB make a decision first and then the CRC, or would it be the CRC and then the ARB? Typically, the way it's been handled is the CRC evaluates first, but the final decision rests with the architectural review. So that presents a small problem. Yes. Okay. We need to discuss that with the ARB. Well, just so we can clear this up a tad, um, <coughs> the concrete that you're talking about is that ground level concrete? Or are we talking on the building itself? On, 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 on the building above the first to second floor, so it'd be floors like two through six would be a, it's a precast concrete panel that's painted, tilted up on, on the. Now, let, let, let me help them out. Wait, wait, hold on, let me, let me, let me finish. Okay, so, I thought it was. Yeah, so, it, and the ground yeah, well, what's, floor is. What's, what's all the, all the next step floors? So, so, no, it's not, there's only, it's only a six story, uh, six story building. So the first two are brick veneer, and then that's exposed a concrete panel that's gonna be painted. It's gonna be painted. Now, the, the word is it's an architectural precast panel. It's not, you're not a cast in place panel that has voids and holes and little divots in it. That's the other thing. And I think the other thing that they're trying to meet here is a collapsible building uh, that's required. That's, a, that's just a structural piece. I, I know, but yeah. that, that's the choice of material there, too, and why they're using those panels above the second floor, I would think. No, it's not. That's all, that's, it's not. But anyway, there, and those will be probably cast on site, by the way. Those will probably be cast on site. They're still architectural precasts, even if they're cast on site for the moment. They'll, they'll be finished. Do we have an architectural rendering of this building in? Yes. <laughs> in color? Can we get a copy of that? Uh, yeah, I think we can. I think Shayla, can we share that? Uh, yeah, it's going through the uh, public review process via the hearing, which is set for the second of November. Okay. Just an aesthetics question. It looks really good. Uh, okay, when you say it looks really good, but is it is it going to work with the rest of the site, especially an old Civic Center building, and what this whole thing is going to be developed to look like? Because we want it to be consistent complementary of the entire downtown area. You know, some so, modern high rise looking something I don't think will fit with what at least most of us have envisioned over there. So and, uh, so of course we're not uh, we the city aren't aren't developing the rest of the site per se. Well, That's gonna be a developer. I know, but we would have some say in what these buildings look like within the plan. And, and so, so I would want to make sure that the core building also fits in with the rest of it. So the, the Civic Center, uh, at least the populous proposal shows that it's gonna have it's gonna have a much different exterior material and finish than it has today than just a solid brick mass. It will be updated with more contemporary finishes and materials that would likely complement that. Those architects from the core building and populous were talking throughout the whole process. Now those are two of the bigger buildings. The parking deck will obviously also have similar characteristics. Will it all be red brick? No, it probably probably be very little red brick left on the site when it's all said and done. But I think the whole site and all the all the uh, character on that will look similar, and it'll be a more updated, probably more contemporary than most of the stuff you see around there today. That's just the way any developer who's going to come in and do it is going to do it. They're not going to build a, a, a you know 1900 style building in there. That's just not what they're going to build. So I'll just tell you that it's going to be a modern looking office building. It'll be an updated modern looking convention center, which is what you want to attract people to come to it and theater. And as well as whatever else is built on site is going to have a more up to date, modern uh, feel to it. It, it. Nestled against single family homes. If they are, if they are, we didn't have a problem with it. I don't, 
I mean, it's 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 what you would expect. That I mean, it's like RSA Tower is not built. They didn't build RSA Tower to look like. I mean, they built it to be a modern high-rise sure. office building. We understand that, but if the NRB says that it fits within the mold, even though it's a modern building, I'm okay with that. Right. Uh, I live in a historic district. Right. I built my house in 2002. Nothing on that house is from the 18 or 1900s. Right. You know, but it, it fits the neighborhood. It gives the neighborhood the same kind of character. Yeah, so, so it's okay. Yeah, you so don't have to sell it. I understand. But I'm just, to Gina's point, so like, and I like using the RSA Tower as an example because whenever that was approved and done, just down, just right across the street is number two Water Street, I think, which is probably one of our oldest original buildings. It's a historic building on the on Water Street, six oh. five story, yeah. and you got a very contemporary, but you know, yeah. the stuff that you see at the ground level, they try and pick up characters and cues from the surrounding area, which is really what the human beings noticing. Uh, absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Um, just now, our garage, it would be very nice, and I can't tell you how to design anything, but if you could throw a little retail space in somewhere with red dolls along the first floor so it actually looks like a building instead of a conference parking deck, I'd be very appreciative. It's, 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 uh, it's guys, I think that we have something we can move forward with. Uh, Joe, everybody, I appreciate your time, and I'll see you in the uh, Thank you to the administration and everybody who's coming out. Thank you for showing up today, and it uh, seems like we have something that we can finally move forward with. Thank you, everybody. Scott, great job. I really appreciate it. You did a great job.